Hi friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and today I'd like to begin a series on canning. This has been one of my um, top requested videos when I um, asked for input on my Instagram account. People would like to know um, just how to can, um, how to can efficiently with lots of small children, maybe some shortcuts that I use and favorite recipes. So I thought I would begin now. It's a good time of year to start gathering your equipment and to start thinking ahead on what you're going to need if you would like to begin canning this year. And what you'll need is very dependent on what you plan to grow and what you plan to preserve. And so I'll walk you through that today. Um, it's a really good time of year to think about this. Um, you know, with this coronavirus situation, we could be potentially looking at food prices going up, um, food shortages in some areas. So it has never been more important to grow your own food, preserve your own food, and set it aside for the winter because we never know what you know, the next season may bring. Canning is one of my favorite methods of preserving our harvests, uh, mainly because it doesn't require the use of electricity to, to store. You know, freezing is wonderful, and oftentimes I prefer the taste of frozen produce or frozen meat, but you're dependent on electricity in order to keep that, that food safe in storage. And we've lost, unfortunately, many times we have lost large amounts of food in a power outage. And so canning is just one way to keep it shelf stable, to not have to depend on electricity, and, and to provide really healthy food for your family year round. So today, this will be the beginning of a series. This is just the essentials, the equipment that you're going to need to begin the process of canning. So if that's something that interests you, I hope you like this video. Subscribe so you can follow the rest of the series through um, this entire growing season. Let's get started. I talk to a lot of people in their fear of things like botulism or of you know potentially exploding their canner in their their pressure canner in their kitchen. These are things that have prevented them from getting started. And I just want to assure you that canning isn't dangerous if you're doing it properly. And it's all about properly educating yourself and, and just following a few simple rules in order to have the best outcome. You know, first it would be you want to use good quality food. If you're using rotten produce or unwashed produce, of course your chances of having um, you know, a rotten batch of canning are, are going to be increased. But if you're using clean produce that's been washed thoroughly, that's right at the peak right, ripeness, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, the second thing is to always make sure you're using sterile, clean, properly working equipment. You're going to want to test your canners to make sure they're working properly. You're going to want to check your jars to make sure there's no cracks on the, on the tops of the, of the jars that would prevent a good seal. You're going to want to make sure they're sterile before you use them. So those things are going to give you a good outcome. And then finally, it's going to be all about using tried and true uh, recipes. You don't want to just make up your own recipes and or just listen to any food blogger out there. You want your recipes to come from a uh, cookbook that has recipes that were from master canners who know what they're talking about because there is a science to canning and you are going to increase your risk of botulism if you're not following proper canning guidelines, the times, the pressures that you're supposed to be using, things like that. So. It sounds a little overwhelming, but I assure you, as long as you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing, you're going to be fine. And so that begins with buying a canning book. Now this is my falling apart, <laughs> obviously it's very well loved, I think this is 15 years old, this is my ball blue book. I love the ball canning guides, I can't go wrong with these recipes, they've always worked great for me. And so... That's my first bit of advice when you're gathering your equipment is to get a good canning guide. There's the ball guide to preserving, there's the ball blue book which is a little bit smaller and kind of less overwhelming with the information, but these guides will give you um, the rundown on all of the equipment and how to care for it, um, and then just recipes for everything that you would need. And if you're following these recipes and caring for your equipment, and washing your produce, you're gonna be fine. I wanna assure you of that. I've been canning for 15 years and my family's never gotten sick. Um, we just make sure that we're doing things properly and, and only using good recipes. So that's the first bit of advice. Get yourself a good canning guide. 
So another question I get from people quite often is, what do I need? Do I need a water bath canner or do I need a pressure canner? What is the difference and what can I use each of these for? And so I wanted to show you these two canners and kind of explain which one you should purchase this year depending on what you want to can. So we'll start with this. This is a water bath canner. It's basically just a big pot with a lid and it has a rack inside of it for you to put your jars in when you're canning them. And a standard water bath canner uh, is going to fit six, or not six, I'm sorry, seven quart size jars in it. That would be one batch. Um, a water bath canner is basically using boiling water to seal your jars shut. It's a very easy method for canning, but this is only safe for high acid foods. So you have to think fruits, jams and jellies, things like pickles that would have vinegar in them to increase the acid levels, um, tomato products, all of those can safely be canned in a water bath canner. So if those are the things you're looking to can this year, then this would be what you would want to purchase. Now if you're wanting to can low acid foods, so you're thinking um, vegetables that wouldn't be pickled, so just green beans or beets, carrots, things like that, meat, broth, beans, any kind of mixture of low and high acid foods, um, those things in order to be canned safely you need to have a pressure canner. And a pressure canner is different than something like an instant pot that's just a pressure cooker. You can't safely can items in an instant pot. You need to have an actual canner. Um, and they come in different forms. There are pressure canners that are dial gauges. That's what I have right here. And there are pressure canners that are weighted gauges. And there are pressure canners that can do both. What I've always used and had good success with is just this basic Presto um, dial gauge pressure canner, which can also, like a water bath canner, fit seven quarts of... Um, of canning jars inside of it and it works great I've never had a problem with it um, this is just one of the most basic pressure canners that you can get now if you're just getting started and this is your first year canning and you're feeling very intimidated by all of this information I highly suggest that you start with a water bath canner buy one of these and do some fruits do applesauce make some jelly maybe do some tomato sauce or tomato juice, those kinds of things, just to get your feet wet this year. And as you build a little confidence and realize that this whole process is a lot easier than you thought, which it really is easier than it sounds, um, then maybe you can move on to the pressure canner. Because this does require a little more um, knowledge and research to use it safely. Uh, you have to babysit the, the canner a little more to make sure you know, the pressure is stable, things like that. But water bath canning is a piece of cake. You boil the jars, you just make sure they're boiling for the amount of time recommended, and everything is easy. So, so the next question is jars. Of course, to can your food, you're going to need jars. And there are some different sizes and shapes of jars that can sometimes be confusing to people. So I'd like to show you those and what they're good for. These are quart size jars. Um, they come in two different shapes. This is a wide mouth jar, and this is your standard narrow jar. Your wide mouth jars you're going to want to buy if you're canning things like pickles or large pieces of fruit, things like that where it would be easier to remove them from the jar after they're canned if you have a wider space at the top to get them out. Now things like applesauce or tomato sauce, um, things like that, uh, you know, the size of the mouth doesn't matter because you're just going to pour it out of the jar. And so the narrower ones work well for that. So depending on what you would like to can, you can purchase either of those jars. Then your pint size jars, which if you go back to your math, two pints equals one quart. Pints also come in those two shapes and sizes. You've got your wide and your narrow and just like with the quartz which one you use for your canning project is going to be dependent on what you're putting in there and how easily you're going to want to get it out of the jar after you open it. 
So you can do can and pint sizes as well. There are also half pint jars like this. These are great for jams and jellies, things like that. There's also these little tiny quarter pints, which I use these mostly um, if I'm canning with them. They would be for gift size. If I just want to make a little gift size jam or jelly or apple butter or something like that, I've used those before. But I very rarely use this because, you know, we're a family of eight. That might be one serving. <laughs> you know what, now that I think about it, I have canned baby food in these before because those are a good size for baby food. But these are all of the jar sizes. When you purchase them brand new from the store, they're going to come with a ring and a lid attached to them. And those are going to be brand new, obviously, rings and lids that you can use to for your first batch of canning with them. Once you can with these rings and lids after the first time, the rings can be reused. So you'll save them, reuse them over and over and over again. The lids, however, if you're following safe canning practices, are only going to be used once. You're going to can these. Once you peel them off of your jars, you're going to toss them in the trash or save them for things like freezing jars in the future. But you can't safely can with these again. These are a single-use item. Um, the reason for that is once this kind of rubber seal on the inside of the lid has been used once and heated once and then peeled off of the jar, it can kind of pull away from the lid a little bit. And it could be so tiny that you don't even see where, it, where it's lifted up and it compromises that seal in the future and you're just increasing your risk of foodborne illness if you try to reuse these. And everybody has a story about their grandma or or someone who used lids over and over and over again and they were fine and, and I'm sure they were but I'm just saying I'm just warning you that all safe canning guidelines say that these are single-use items um, and then you can use your own discretion um, for how you would want to use them in the future so all right, let's talk a little bit about where to get the best deals on these items if you just go to Walmart during canning season or during this time of year um, you're going to pay a lot for jars and lids and canners. Buying off season obviously you're going to get your best deals but I would encourage you to look like especially for jars to look secondhand. Like I said before these can be used forever so long as there aren't any chips in the glass on the top of the jar that would affect the seal so I found so many jars for good prices at garage sales or I've had elderly friends that no longer can that used to and they know they hear that I can and they're like I have boxes of jars and so I'm happy to take anyone's jars obviously I just always if they're old jars or used jars check the seal at the top run my finger across if you feel any little cracks or nicks that's not a good jar for canning you might be able to save that for freezing items or for storage, you know, on your shelf in a, in a cabinet in the pantry or something, but you can't can safely if there are any um, nicks on the tops of the jars. So check Craigslist. I've seen people, you know, canning used to be something that everybody did and now very few people do it. So someone may pass away, you know, an elderly person may pass away and then their children find boxes of canning supplies in the attic that they're never going to use and so they'll put them up on Craigslist and you can find amazing deals. Um, so just I would encourage you to look for jars um, in places and get them used. Lids are a little trickier to find. If you go to the store they'll sell like ball canning lids in these little boxes and it's enough for maybe one batch or one and a half batches and they're really expensive. I have found the best deals by going to Amish bulk stores and I can get, for example, there are 24 lids in this package and I paid $4.59 for it. So that's less than, what, 20 cents a lid, maybe? And that's really not that bad. There are companies that make reusable lids that you can use again and again safely to can your items. But if you read the reviews on those, you are running the risk of unsealing in storage. The reusable lids often don't 
um, stay sealed for, for very long. And so my thinking is I invest so much time in growing my produce and preserving it that I don't want to risk having a bad seal three months from now and, and have all of that time and energy and, and food to go wasted. So it's worth it for me to pay 20 cents you know, a jar to, to safely preserve my food and know that it, it'll be shelf stable forever. Canning guides, if you look on Amazon, you can often find them used uh, for very good deals. Thrift stores, I've seen them sold there before for very cheap, so that's a, a good way to find them for a decent price. Canners even, I've seen them at garage sales and places used before. The only thing I would caution you against is if you're buying a used pressure canner, you're going to want to get your gauge checked on it before you start using it because the gauges can um, be faulty and not reading properly. And so if you check with your local extension office, um, a lot of them will test them for you or the manufacturer of the canner. I know Presto, the company, will, um, if you send them your gauge, they will test it for you and send it back to you free of charge. I believe you only have to pay shipping. And uh, so that's a good option. If you bought a used canner, um, you have to pay a little bit then to ship it and get it tested, but that's much cheaper than buying a, a brand new one. Okay, and then finally I would like to talk to you about some of the more specialty equipment and utensils that can make your canning process go a little more smoothly and easily. Um, the first thing I would highly recommend getting is a nice stainless steel funnel. This is going to make filling your jars so much easier. Um, and you're going to be pouring very hot liquids into your jars, so that's why I suggest stainless steel over plastic. It's going to work really well. Secondly, since you are dealing with hot jars and you don't want to use your hand to pull them out of the canner, getting one of these jar lifting tools is very helpful. They just help you lift up like that and then you don't have to worry about burning yourself. Um, and typically, these three items that I'm showing you are going to come in a kit. So you've got your jar lifter. This is a little magnetic wand that helps you pick up your lids. Um, without having to touch them because we'll get to this in our next canning video but you do have to kind of sterilize and heat your lids, your rings, and your jars before canning and so if you're pulling them out of hot liquid this is a way to do that not only without heating your hands up but without um, getting any germs or bacteria on the inside of the lid. So this is a very helpful tool. This last one, I mean I don't use it very often but it is helpful. Um, this is a tool that helps you remove air bubbles from the inside of uh, your jar. You're going to want to remove all your air bubbles because those will affect your headspace. And um, but I found a butter knife just to be just as effective. So if you lose this, don't worry, you'll get by without it. The top part of this it has little increments. It goes um, one inch, three quarters of an inch, a half an inch, a fourth an inch. And it, that is sort of helpful for you to gauge, especially when you're beginning, your headspace on your jar, because each recipe is going to require a different amount of air that's left in the very top of your jar. So this tool measures that for you so that you don't overfill or underfill. But you'll find that as you get going with your canning, you get pretty good at eyeballing it, and this isn't as necessary. But if you're starting out and it's coming, in the kit together, you know, just get all three of these items so you have them. And that's it. That's all you need to get started canning this year. So now is the time. I really encourage you. You're doing your garden planning right now. You're figuring out what you're going to be growing. Now think about how you want to preserve that stuff. Do you want to freeze it? Do you want to can it? Um, and based on what you're growing, either get yourself a water bath canner, a pressure canner, or both and start looking for your jars and your rings and your lids, your extra lids and some of your accessories, and most importantly, get yourself that guide so that you have all the safe recipes. And then as we go through this growing season, I hope you'll follow along with me. I'm going to share as I preserve items here that we're growing and uh, show you how I, I do very large amounts of, of produce in a very short time while also homeschooling my kids and, and doing everything else. So. 
I hope you'll find that information useful. I hope you found this information useful and that you'll join me in the coming canning videos. Hope you're having a blessed day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.